Ladies and gentlemen, this is the raid boss tier list. Uh, covering all three raids, and I know there's some raid monsters that aren't bosses like Scavs and Crabs and Ice Demon, but at the end of the day, I don't care. You can complain about it all you want, you can suck me. We're still doing the raid boss and they're going to be included, that way there's no questions and nothing left out. Left out, sorry. We're going to start at the top here, which is the Mother Doll. I believe this is the entire room, so Baby and Mother, Mama Doll. Um, and I think we just go, go in swinging straight away for Chambers of Zerek. This is one of the worst designed rooms in the game. You might think Mudderdale is cute, and yes, the Mudderdale pet is awesome, but uh, the boy Kerber himself said it best, that doing Mudderdale room is pretty much like doing the Inferno. You're just trying to cut the tree while baby Mudderdale tri you, and you get fucked no matter what, uh, regardless of your control. Uh, this room tilts me. This room is the reason you miss PBs and CMs. This room kills you for no reason. This is a D tier boss. D tier room. It is a joke that you can pray correctly and still take 45 damage through prayer consistently. It is the joke that in melee range, he back to back to back ranges you for 50s and 40s because you're protecting melee so you take no damage. Terribly designed room. I hate everything about Motodile room. I always take an extra broom to that room just because of how much of a cunt that room is. That extra broom is not enough. Trust me. Next we have Vespula. Vespula is also a D tier boss. Now, the reason Vespula is, while Vespula is really easy, Vespula can be really daunting and can throw a raid very quickly if you don't do it correctly. Um, the best part is doing Vespula correctly is by doing it incorrectly. People just uh, absolutely send the portal and then finish the room. That's it. That's not even how the boss was designed. It's, it's flawed by its own design, but it is a very quick room. And to be honest, it is pretty fun to do. I like taking the... I don't like taking the Tebow in there because it always misses. The both is really nice in there. I know it's not as hard hitting as fast as the Tebow, but it is way more accurate, and the Shadow obviously deletes the portal like there's no tomorrow. But it is also a very dangerous boss raid resetting room. So D tier for Vespula. Next on the list, we have Vasa. There have been many times where I have done a raid, and we've had Vasa, and someone has been like, it's someone I've never raided with before. They're like, yeah, I know how to do Vasa. I do solo, I do solo CMs. We go to Vasa. And then he um, pretty much kills you. That's the best way to explain it. Yeah, Vasa, I think the worst part about Vasa is your team, okay? What you have to do when you get to Vasa is when he teleports you, everyone runs under Vasa and you pray ranged. Or you don't pray at all. Do not pray mage because you'll kill your team. Do run under, otherwise you'll kill your team. Very common mistake people make. Um, otherwise, Vasa is pretty solid boss, to be honest. It looks awesome. This is a, an E-tier boss. Vanguards and Cox. Uh, uh, this is pretty much the same premise. For, um, almost every single chamber is Zerik boss. It's the same premise, isn't it? it? They're designed to fuck you. Let me give you a rundown, okay? Cox is an RNG raid. Top is a skill raid. And um, TOA is a perfection raid, okay? So... A lot of these Cox bosses are really just really D and C tier. And I love the raid at the same time. But Vanguards are just, they're designed to fuck you. Like, they, they, it is so such a buggy room. The melee Vanguard doesn't stay still. It moves around for no reason. The mage Vanguard just wants to kill you all the time. Does ridiculous damage. So does the range Vanguard. But you can stand on the range Vanguard to avoid all damage. It's just so poorly designed. And then you reset them because the Tebow is too strong. The Shadow is too strong. The Void Waker spec is too strong, so you just reset them all the time. Um, but you do get an overload, so C tier. Absolutely. C tier, because Vanguards pretty much guarantee a no prep normal cogs if you have Vanguard towards the end of the raid. And then you have Tecton. Tecton, in my opinion, is one of the best bosses in the game. Really fun. Gives an Onyx if you're super lucky. I've had two from Tecton, the old Tectonics. The problem is when you do a CM, um, you can spend 20 minutes trying to kill this guy before you actually get the raid that you want. Uh, Tecton is incredibly defensive for absolutely no reason. Also fucks you, except when you want him to. Uh, for Venge, he won't. Um, he's annoying. It's better in solos. The more people in your room, the more likely you are to get killed, but also the faster it is in a team. So it's a bit of a catch-22. And um, that's about it, really. He's the only rewarding boss outside of Ohm because you do get an Onyx. He's going to go B tier. We do like Tecton. Tecton is cool. Next you have Mystics, who ironically um, are shit. I hate Mystics because the Tebow has incredibly shit accuracy on Mystics. Um, but uh, 
much higher damage threshold than the Bofa. So you want to take the T-Bone and just rely on big hits, even though you always hit zeros. But then the Shadow and the Occult just absolutely smash Mystics anyway. Mystics are annoying, but they are easily stay spotable because of Spaghetti Code. Um, that's about it, really. They're not too punishing. They don't kill you that often. Shamans are pretty much in the same boat as Mystics. They're shit. Stay spotable. Will barely kill you unless you're an idiot. Um, and for that reason, it's also B tier. Very easy rooms to clear. Next, you have Guardians and Radiators. Uh, the Guardians... The Guardians are a little bit of a point junkie room because you can just keep walking into the exit once one Guardian is dead and keep getting points, although you take damage. Um, but it really does create a divide in the team, right? Because Guardians, once you're, once you're doing Guardians, then someone is there not in the same timing as you. You're trying to damage the Guardians with a pickaxe. Uh, people start taking a lot of damage and you start killing your team, which is not fun. They drop seeds. For some reason, Will has 20 less mining levels than me, and I'll have an Inquisitor's top and a better pickaxe than him, and he'll still out DPS me in this room. Um, C tier, okay? C tier because they don't really do much else for me. Ice Demon is an immediate F tier room. Fuck Ice Demon. Ice Demon is shit. Ice Demon, Warhammer, no reason, never hits, okay? Uh, you need to use fire spells to do completely full damage. Everyone will go, well, oh, Tebow's best in slot range. That doesn't mean shit. Don't tell me best in slot range like that means something. It's still garbage. It still won't hit unless you fucking, unless you hit him with the Dragon Warhammer. Terrible room. Tightrope room. Uh, I don't think the mages are on here, so this is rangers and mages together. Tightrope room is uh, E tier room, okay? Because tightrope is uh, best when you have Venge, okay? I know you can Kirby skip, but you're not Kirby skipping, so we're not talking about it, okay? You're not doing it. It's not something to consider here. Um... If you don't have Venge, you're losing a lot of damage in this room, and then you just get fucked anyway. They're hitting 45 through prior for no reason. How come you only stream on YouTube and never on Kick, for example? I'll give you that example after the tier list, my friend. Uh, we've got the Scav. Um, Scav's a C tier because they're really easy to kill. They're not really that much of a threat, and they drop everything you need. But they could be better. The problem is, is I think Scavs need to rework. I think Jagex could make it so Scavs are guaranteed to drop at least one plank uh, per kill. That way you're guaranteed to get a bank created within two Scavs. And it kind of makes your Chambers of Zeric time less RNG and more skill based. If they can remove some RNG elements from Cox, that'd be awesome. Um, whether there's some sort of guaranteed threshold for resources too, I don't know. But I think one plank per Scav kill guarantee would be awesome. And um, sometimes you, you go 20 scav kills without getting mushrooms, and then the raid is dead. So C tier because they can be good, but they're shit. Crab room is awesome. The only problem I have with crab room is the diagro mechanics, which is standard across the game. Because a, a crab will follow you, attack you, walk up to you, you'll stand still, the crab will hit you, and then the crab will walk away. That's it. Like, where are you going? Why? The amount of rooms that have been fucked, or at least delayed heavily, because the crab's just like, okay, and then fucks off. Nah. Crabs are E tier. I don't like crabs at all. Then you have Ulm. Okay, the last chamber of Zeric boss. So the main premise is no room in Cox is A or S tier. It's a fun raid, but it is so heavily RNG dependent that every room is so flawed that it is hard to make it perfect. Ulm is the same. Ulm is a lot of RNG involved. It's hard to make that room perfect. But it is the best damn desired boss in the game. Nothing is better than Solar Ulm. Until you do Solar Ulm perfect, you do not understand how good this boss is in the real, like, just the, the best part of PVMing in RuneScape really does come from this boss in this room. S tier. Okay, I am biased because I love Solar Ulm. When you get the perfect Solar Ulm achievement and you get it back to back to back and you do it in trios and five mans, it's chef's kiss. And then you get the whole team doing Solar Ulm. Like me and the boys, when we do it on Gim, we'll do Solo Mage and then we'll do the Solo Melee Method with three of us at a time. And it's fucking beautiful. It's amazing. Uh, Solar Ulm is, is good. Grinds my gears, but God, it's, it's a good, good, good fucking boss. All right. Uh, we'll move on to Tob, which is the second raid, of course. A lot of you guys may not have done Tob because there's... Uh, Toxic and cringe gatekeeping around the content for no reason. The first room is the Mage of Sangu Nasty. 
Um, she's she she's slutty. She's thick. Um, now, this is obviously comparing with hard mode and normal top. Blood spawns are shit. It depends on how you do the raid. Now, top is done differently by so many different people. There's a meta, then there's a better way to do it, um, which is less time efficient, but more fun and less cringe. So, um, I I like freezing a maiden room. I like maiden. I think maiden is a well designed boss. If the spiders go in to Maiden, what, what, like the freezers don't get them and Maiden absorbs them regardless of HP, she gets health based on the HP that was left, but she also gets increased max hit, increased attack speed, and it just makes the room more toxic. There's more chances that the blood will spawn. It's a very sophisticated room. It can really throw the raid right at the start. And I believe at least when Hard Mode Top came out, the original strategy was if you could beat Maiden in under half an hour solo, which was very easy, you pretty much had guaranteed time in solo Hard Mode Top. Maiden... Great boss, great room, very easy, A tier. Next you have Bloat, which is a big boy. We, we do love a big boy. Um, bloat, in my opinion, uh, 67 fishing, by the way, in the hardcore. I'll take that, thank you, Juicy. Um, bloat, Bloat, in my opinion, is the room that will wipe the team the most. No, no, this kills the, no, Bloat wipes, no. I think Bloat kills the most players, Nile kills the most teams. But Bloat will kill people all the time, okay? If you're not careful, you can clear a team very quickly in bloat. And it's awesome. Don't get me wrong. If you wipe in bloat, that is like never be discouraged. That just happens. Okay? You misclick, uh, you try to get cheeky and get some extra hits in. Whatever happens, it happens, alright? Bloat's fun. He's a big boy. He's A tier, okay? He's A tier because. He's not S tier, okay? There's flaws with Bloat. For example, he kills you and it's fucking annoying. Your team kills you, it's fucking annoying. Meat falling, it's fucking annoying, okay? Next, you have the Nilo Room. The Nilo Room, in my opinion, this is a bit of a hot take, but I know that the more advanced PVMers in the game will agree with me. The Nilo Room is one of the best designed raid rooms in the game. One of the best designed mechanics in the game. The... Raid, like the, the entire room, the waves are the same every time. Then the big Nihilists switch it up by having random different um, colours spawn out of them. It's very smart. It's a very sophisticated room. And once you learn the mechanics, once you learn the timings and which, um, like what wave's coming next in your role, you can really dance in this room. And it's really a beautiful thing. Like, Nilo is such a well-designed room. The boss is really well-designed. Everything about this room is perfect. It can absolutely clear a team if you're not efficient, if your major is really slow on freezers, if you guys aren't communicating well and you're not getting onto the aggressive nylos. Um, this room is perfect in every way. This room is a perfect example of what Baba Puzzle Room could be, but it isn't. S tier room, absolutely. Beautiful, beautiful room, for sure. Next you have Soat. Soat is fun. Soat's good. Soat's a big boy. What he likes to do is um, damage, basically. This is why I don't recommend bringing Void to top. I think Void to top is copium. This room, you'll just get fucked, okay? Um, a, a little unknown mechanic that a lot of people don't know from top, which I realized recently when Will told me, was that the DD ball that comes out of Soat is... The, the speed of that coming out is determined by how many balls he shoots out, right? So you don't want to be flinching Soat unless you're with certain people that get pissed off at it. I love doing it to troll them. Um, so you want to be in melee range as much as possible, which a lot of people don't do, especially when they're ranging, to reduce DD balls. It's just a little fun fact for some people that might not realise. And then you have the maze. The maze in this room is the best part about taking learners, because they fuck it up every time, guaranteed. No one gets the maze right the first time. They always fuck it up. They panic, they go too fast, they take corners too quickly, they go ahead too, too much. It's awesome. A tier boss. Absolutely A tier boss, for sure. Zarpus. Zarpus is overrated. Um, people take the fumes too seriously in Zarpus. Uh, the amount of times, the amount of raids I've done, I, I dare say I've done about 40% of my top KC. It's just me, Nate, and Anon dancing in a circle instead of catching the, the fumes, the, the exhumed things to, that, that he eats at the start of his room. You guys know what I'm talking about? Because uh, it's not really a problem at the end of the day. Just let him go in because it's a good bit of fun. And then he screeches like at a higher percent threshold of health anyway. Uh, the boss is really fun. It's really good once you get the, the melee running down with the scythe or the whip or whatever you're using. It's really good. Um, and it's really beneficial. And it just feels good getting it right. Doing the entire row perfectly. Zarbus is a fun room. 
He will absolutely blast you off the map if you fuck it up. This is an A-tier room. The, the theme here is that almost all of top is perfect, right? Because then you got Verzik. The entire Verzik room. Verzik is basically... Like, you have top, and then you have Verzik, which is like just a second raid on the end of the raid. Especially in hard mode top. She will fucking pile drive you into the dirt, okay? So you've got to be careful with this boss. Big learning curve. The reason this is a big learning curve, P2... It's because people overthink it. People try too hard. People don't understand basic mechanics. Walk in a square. The idea is to get to P3 as quick as possible and then get through P3 as quick as possible. But it's totally fine to do almost no damage in P2 and be alive for P3. Absolutely. Another thing people need to realize when they're learning in P3 Versic is to stay on her ass. Don't run away. People run off and brew. Oh, I'm taking damage. I need a brew. They run to the other side of the room. You know what happens? They're still taking damage. You may as well just hit her and brew. Hit, brew, hit, brew. Okay? Keep whipping her no matter what. Keep on siphoning, keep on hitting. Don't run away because she will hit you no matter what. Beautifully designed boss. Again, just like Om, I think this is this is just perfect. Web running is awesome. The different ways you can do P2 is excellent. You can troll people in P3. And if you really want to spice things up, you can throw a dragon warhammer on her. Trust me, it makes the fight a lot more fun. Dragon Warhammer spec, and then the rest of your team will shit their pants. It's awesome. And then the common theme is that everything on top is pretty much perfect. It's a very skill-based raid, as opposed to Cox being a RNG-based raid. And then you have the perfection-based raid, where pretty much if you're not perfect, you're not going to have a good time. Starting with Zebak. Zebak, I think, is awesome by design. Look at him. He's happy. He's chompy, okay? Zebak is a big boy. He's beautiful. Um... My only problem with Zebak is that Upset Stomach can be a fairly RNG invocation from time to time. Everything else in Zebak is pretty straightforward. The puzzle room is really simple. Uh, the boss fight is excellent. The animations are awesome. He's really squishy, so you feel like you're constantly doing damage. And there's, if I'm correct, no chip damage. If there is, it's very minimal chip damage. So um, the TOA bosses is included in the puzzle room. Yes, it is. So I think Zebak is, by design, almost flawless. It's perfect. It's S-tier, for sure. Uh, then we have Kefri, okay? Kefri, on the other hand... Kefri depends, okay? The more, the more skilled you get, the more you do TOA, the more you learn to appreciate Kefri. Uh, you can really fuck your team over very quickly in here with the poo-poo. And there's a few different um, ways to do Kefri. Like, there's a, a way that I, I've developed myself recently doing, doing Kefri. Well, last time I was doing TOA, at least... Uh, there's different ways you can stack poo to avoid uh, swarm spawns. I've just been kind of studying it and trying to figure out the best way to do it in, in bigger teams and in bigger invocations for medic. Um, there's, a, there's a lot going on to it. The puzzle room is a bit pedantic, okay? You can do it really quickly, which is good, okay? It's not, dra it's not, dragged. Uh, it's not dragged out. Um, it's a melee-only based room. There's almost no chip damage. Uh, except for the minions that are spawned. You can take almost no damage in the room, uh, in, in the boss fight, sorry. I like to kill the eggs. I think Kefri is a pretty A-tier boss. I think it's designed really well, and it looks really good. I love all tier except Baba, that cunt needs to fuck up to F-tier. That's very aggressive. Uh, let's do Akka. Akka is... Um, I think flawed by design, if I'm honest with you. If you're wondering why there's a white outline in TOA, it's because this uh, tier list was updated to include TOA at a later date from its original design from Anon. That's all. So don't get upset. Uh, Akka, by design, I think is flawed immediately because Butterfly. Uh, I don't think Butterfly is wrong. I don't think... It obviously was not intended. Um, and you can avoid a lot of damage doing Butterfly. But I think Butterfly is very skill-based. I do like that. Um... Yeah, it's probably one of the harder boss rooms for sure, especially, I'm upset by the white outline, who cares? I, I think the bigger the team, especially when you're trying to do perfect Kefri, sorry, perfect Akka, I believe that in terms of combat tasks, from what I've seen and heard, Akka has the hardest combat tasks in the raid and maybe even the game, some of the hardest combat tasks to do. Um, I, I love the design of Akka, I think he is awesome, I think the room is great, um, but I just think the cum phase is a big, like, L, man. The cum phase is so obnoxiously, like, RNG. Like, it, it's so dumb. It is too, too overwhelming for a lot of people. There's a lot of damage there that shouldn't be taken. Like, you shouldn't be taking constant 25s like that. It's, it's, 
there, there needs to be a balance in, in that phase, I think, which really does suck for Akka. The puzzle room itself isn't really a problem. It's just light beams and mining XP. So I think Akka can have a B rating overall. Then we have Bubba. Everyone knows Bubba puzzle room is utter dog shit. Um, I think it should be redesigned. I'm surprised it hasn't been redesigned. Like, if you have Akka with the mining mining uh, puzzle room, like the idea, I believe, when they were pitching to you, was there'll be skill-based elements. There's one skill-based element, that's mining. Why not have some sort of woodcutting feature for Bubba's puzzle room that's the same sort of length and design idea as Akka's? Perfect pitch, okay? You have four trees, and it's like, for every two players, you have to look after an extra tree. You just cut the tree for 30 seconds, and one guy hits the monkeys away from the tree. 30, 40 seconds later, puzzle room done. That way, there's axes, there's like a woodcutting skilling element involved that they originally pitched. It changes up the raid a little bit, and then you don't feel like you're wasting your time doing fuck all in that raid. That's just an idea I had to incorporate skilling into TOA. Bubba, the fight itself, red Xing is cringe, um, but feels necessary. Although it's, I know it's not entirely necessary, I could do 500 without it, I don't care. It feels necessary, that's the point. Bubba otherwise hits 24, 25, 3 prayer. Sorry, let me mute that. Uh, 24, 25, 3 prayer, even on the Zero Invocation raid. The shit balls that fly at you every 33% HP are obnoxiously strong. The baboons are annoying, but they're pretty easy to kill. The sarcophagus is, makes no sense. It's unnecessary to have these boulders thrown at you all the time. It's just, it's a... It's a mess of a boss that could have been a lot better. This is C tier, for sure. It could have been a lot better. The design is great, otherwise. Next we have the obelisk. Now this is going to be P1. And P2, just the obelisk itself in P2. And then the two wardens, I just need to pull up the wiki to remember which warden is which. And uh, for that will be for P2 and P3. Two seconds. Uh, TOA. Okay. So the obelisk itself, I think, is awesome. But that's because when I do the obelisk, I'm a very selfish person. I don't do a lot of solid TOAs because solid TOA is gay. Um, I think the obelisk is... Awesome, because all I do is I void wake a speck it, then I sit there bofering it while everyone else PGSs it. Obelisk first phase, I think is dumb. I think the first phase of the obelisk is fucking stupid, because you're just taking unnecessary damage. Like, the disco lights, fine, whatever. But the balls, they get shot at you. Especially in the solar, it's guaranteed 60 damage. Why is this not preventable, or at least, like, restricting? Why can you not reduce that by praying correctly, or, or by... Even wearing certain armor, having a certain level of defense, having um, a certain amount of damage done to the obelisk, anything. It is just unavoidable, annoying damage that makes no sense. Um, and I think because that obelisk sits in, uh, I think it sits in C tier. I think the design of it otherwise is pretty good. Uh, P2 as well as design is great. It's annoying. Sometimes the skulls land in the obelisk and it's like, why? Otherwise, yeah. C tier. Maybe, Bub maybe Bubba should be D tier. Yeah, Bubba's going to go D tier, actually. Fuck Bubba. I don't care about Bubba. Although Bubba is double points. Most points in the, in the raid before Wardens. Next, we've got this Warden here, which is... Uh... Which one's this? Termican's Warden? I still don't know which one that is. Which one's Termican's Warden? Termican's Warden's the one we don't call out, right? I think so. Fergo, which one do we normally do? I don't know. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure this is the one we do. Is, hold on, no. It just tells us what they summon. This one summons uh, P3. This one does Zabak and Bubba. So that means we fight this one in P2, right? I think that's correct. We do the do the one on the screen. This one here. Because if you fight this one in P2, then you do this one in P3, right? Yeah, okay. So in, in P2, I normally do this one. P2 we normally do this one, um, which is the best, because I believe that this one closes the distance to melee you. This one does not. If I'm wrong on that, I do apologize, but I'm pretty sure this one is way better to fight in P2, because then you also get 
um, him in P3. So that means in P2, this one is great. In P3, this one's shit because I think having Aka is annoying because then you have to actually somewhat focus on what he's doing and also you have less time to respond, right? Which I think if you have the certain invocations on, Aka is even worse in that phase. Um, and then you have Kefri, which if you have Aerial Assault on, you've just, you're, no. Okay, no. I think this, this Warden is B tier. Okay, this one's B tier because after P2, you don't want, you don't want him for P3. You want this one for P3, and in P2, he melees you, right? You can avoid melee and have an easier time against this guy trying to melee you, as you can against this Warden here. So this is going to be a little bit confusing, but P2, P2 good, P3 bad. P2 bad, P3 very good. This one is A tier, okay? This is your A tier warden for P3. Because P3 on this warden is infinitely... P2 on this warden is infinitely better than P3 on this warden, for sure. Block left, I don't know what they even look like. Yeah, that's it, you know? So you, you make it so this warden is P2 and this warden is P3, okay? That's all you do. And that is the, the raid boss tier list, guys. Pretty simple, pretty quick tier list for you all today. Sorry if it was confusing uh, behind me. Ice Demon is F tier because fuck the Ice Demon is so it's so poorly laid out that room. They're like especially in solo CMs, it's just like if your Warhammer doesn't hit, you're wasting your time. Oh, do your fire spells, and then other than that, you've got nothing. Okay, your, the the Tebow is shockingly bad unless you hit Warhammers. The Warhammer doesn't hit. Now, these rooms here, so you got Tightrope. Tightrope just does unnecessary damage for no reason. Crabs, uh, crab, crabs. Crabs is crap because they just de on you for no reason. It's a very like waste of time room. They're very easy to do, but if you're teaching people, if someone doesn't know what they're doing, in a team, crabs can go sideways unless you're organized. And Vassa, Vassa's E tier because every time you do Vassa with someone who says, Oh, I know how to, I can do, I do solo cogs, I can do Vassa, they will always get you fucking killed. Okay? Always get you killed. Plus, I have unbiased, uh, no, I have a, a biased opinion. I think, yeah, biased opinion because my team never hits on Vassa. Otherwise, it would be much higher. D tier. Mother Dials. Cute. Fun. But will always kill you. Always, like, baby Mother Dial ranges you a melee range for no reason. Back to back to back. You shouldn't be taking 45 to prayer from Mother Dial. Pointless damage. Pretty much, while you're cutting the tree and the baby Mother Dial tri you, it's just like doing the Inferno. It's the exact same. It makes no sense. It's annoying. Vespiola can wipe a team very quickly, but it's very fun and very easy once you learn it. But just be careful when you're teaching... Because you, you will wipe a raid. And Bubba is shit. C tier. You, you can see now. Okay, C tier, you've got uh, the Vanguards. They're crap by design. Um, but they are really essential for no preps, which are really fun. Uh, Guardians are just, they're there. Cool. Same, same for Scabs. Like, Scabs could be much better. They could be improved. Their drop, rate could, their drop table could be a lot better. So that Cox becomes less than an RNG raid when you're not prepping. Or when you are prepping. And the Obelisk is just like... You take unnecessary damage in P1, like ridiculous unnecessary damage for no reason. And for that reason alone, the obelisk sucks. Then you've got B tier. Tecton is fun, he's great, but he will ruin your day. Uh, CMs uh, start off with Tecton for a very good reason. Mystics and Shamans are just, I mean, there's, they're, they're as good as they are bad. There's nothing wrong with them. They're easy rooms, they're great. If you've got them in your cock scout, you're going to have a decent raid, right? They're pretty much essential to make a raid not shit. Akka would be better if the come phase wasn't so bad. And uh, this Warden is the one that you want to fight in P2, not P3. P3 is really bad. P2 is really good. Uh, top, good. All four. A, A, A tier. Top bosses, good. Beautifully well designed. Excellent. Almost nothing wrong with them unless your team's garbage. Um, Bubba, same really. So not Bubba. Caffrey, same really. Uh, the puzzle room isn't that bad. It's, it's tedious, but it's like really quick, so it's not too big of a problem. And you're using a plug-in anyway. Um, and it's a really smart room. It's, it's really smart. And then this warden is the one you want to be doing in P3. P2, it's not too bad compared to like P3 from the other warden. It just wants to melee you, but P3 for this warden is perfect because you've got Bubba and uh, Zebak, which is the way to go. Then you've got S here, which is perfection. Ohm is the best boss in the game. The best bossing experience you'll ever get is Ohm. Nala room is so perfect. It's one of the best designed rooms in the game. It is it is peak raid. Verzik obviously is perfect as well. Well designed. Verzik is excellent. And Zebak is the only room in TOA that doesn't make me want to, you know, shoot myself in the back of the head, provided I don't have upset stomach on. Upset stomach's fine. It can lead to being RNG raid, but otherwise, 
There's barely any. If I, I believe there's all, there is no chip damage. There might be some. Uh, it's very easy to hit. Like he's squishy, so that makes it feel like you're doing a lot of damage. You get boosted XP rates. He's awesome. He's always happy. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the um, Raids Boss tier list. Certified stamp of approval by Mod Ash and King Condor. Um, if anyone else has a different opinion, you can leave it in the comment section down below, but you are more than likely wrong. Thank you for coming by. We're going to do some Hakka Iron Man content now. This is the easiest room in the raid. It's quite simple. you got a big boy. Look at him. God damn. Fuck me. Look at that boy. It's huge. Oh, <laughs> boy.